Hi, it's Steve and Joe from Fresh Agenda. And Steve, we're back with another not very weekly take mm. with a, another roundup of what's going on in global dairy markets. Of course, uh, the G- latest GDT result, which was down again in mm. China the week. Let's okay, let's hit it. So a bit to cover on this one. Um, so this is something we'll use quite a bit to just explain our process, but I thought it was a good way to summarise what sorts of things are seeing. So just to cap the big things moving in the world market at the moment. Firstly, in Europe, uh, we see that, um, you know, milk is milk is approaching the spring flush. Um, that's giving a, uh, a shift in product mix at the same time as cheese demand is weakening. So we're seeing more skim and butter producers. Consequence of that, um, so they're certainly weighing on the market and getting basically a reasonable bias to sit back and wait for the for the flush to reveal itself. Mm. Um, uh, and that's um, that's dampening expectations. Those those effects flow into uh, skim milk powder markets and butter markets elsewhere sure. and having heavy influence on on what's occurring in um, in the New Zealand product streams and in US non fat dry milk. Mm. Um, so that's weighing on, and I think the thing that's also occurring with that, <clears throat> with that um, blend of influences, you've got um, Southeast Asian demand, you know, um, it's, waiting. It's faltering, yeah. isn't it? It's um, it's weak. we're it's, waiting for it to come back, but we keep waiting. Well, buyers sitting back saying, "Well, you know, there's plenty of product in New Zealand. That's because of the shift in mix, and there's going to be more product in Europe. So why hurry? No urgency. Whatsoever. We're not at the bottom yet. No." Right? We should mention China in amongst that. We sort mm-hmm. of skipped over that. But um, that weak recovery, particularly in whole milk powder requirement, is adding to that mix um, pressure in um, New Zealand, significant increase in in output of those two commodities. And as, as whole milk powder is, output is reduced to try and balance with, with China. But that's we'll see how that's going in the GDT results. Then in the US, um, so I've got a green flash there because there, there aren't many of them on this chart. Milk is slowing um, and demand is resilient, but it's a blue, it's a blue flash because we're not sure whether that yet is positive or negative. I mean, mm. it is it is better and it is kind of in balance. The market's sort of uh not moving too much and there hasn't been a lot of change in you know the futures in uh US cheddar, but they do firm a little as we go. There's a little bit of a carry in the in the futures market. But uh, and so that's a caution just yeah. uh, to watch. It should probably be a, an orange watch, Could, really. Yeah, mm. you're right. Good point. <laughs> Late, but a good point. <laughs> <clears throat> so with the effect of weaker EU cheese prices and, you know, we have seen some softening in the US, that's putting pressure in in you know on New Zealand cheddar prices, which have come off quite a bit. Yeah. But that intense cheese competition will probably play out uh, in coming months, as Europe tries to offload cheese, which is you know reaching around three thousand three thousand euro a ton, so that's you know that's another dimension. And lastly, the whey complex <clears throat> with weak demand for the you know high concentrate um, WPCs, uh, pushing more solids back into dry whey or sweet whey powder, and that is just adding to competition there. So that's also a um, you know, we've seen a big decline in that. With US cheese output on the rise, that's just adding to the, the stocks of um, of okay. whey powders. So a, a much bigger red list than mm. black list there, Steve. You've noticed that. Mm. I mean, this will change. Mm. I think in the second half, we will we will expect to see European milk slow down. It gets pretty hard to beat comparatives. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and in fact, in the newsletter this week, some signs that it is slowing already. Mm. So Yeah, it's yeah. quite mixed. Yeah. yeah. It still, it still feels a little bit on the, the knife edge. Yeah, so. but that demand has got to come back. Yes. Um, you know, China is is recovering. Its trade has been better, and our, our trade highlights last week, I think, pick, or last time, I think, picked that up. But its trade is is coming back. It's just whole milk where that still is a major hangover. Sure. Um, in this. All right. So that's the background in the run-up to this GDT event. Markets generally softened mm. in powders. Uh, and whole milk, you know, quite quite a bit in terms of um, you know the softening in New Zealand anticipation. This was going to be a weak result. <clears throat> we saw a weak pulse result um, last week. Skim milk powder coming off in Europe because of that, you know, expectation is going to be heavier supplies. Mm-hmm. Um, not much movement in the US. A lot of lot of action in the US in the short term yep. in the spot market. Um, 
with, you know, um, I suppose spot milk being processed and that's going back to the market. There's some weakness there in the short term. We've seen an almost a $700 correction in spot prices in the last week in Cheddar. So there's plenty to look at, but the, the forward curve isn't changing very much. No. And it also doesn't climb very high. No, that's true. That's a quite a small scale there. So. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so in this result, we had a pretty mm. negative run again. Um, just to put context on it, where we are, I mean, you know, homework know, powder down um, around 5%, I think it was, in total. Um, skim got off lightly, and I'm a bit surprised it was off so lightly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, given the supply issues, mm. yeah. Um, AMF got hammered, um, butter also weakened. I mean, there's a lot more fat available in New Zealand, and that is that is no doubt weighing on it without a couple of important markets, uh, Northern, Northern America and uh, and EU no longer available. So, um, but cheddar ran against the grain, which was quite interesting. I yeah, thought. it's it's been highly volatile on GFP, mm. hasn't it, cheddar? It's probably picked itself back up to the comparatives of season. Let's look at that. Um, in skim milk powder, I thought this was quite interesting. The um, price is still quite, you know, tightly converged, mm -hmm. but it was the European product, the ALA product, that took the biggest beating and uh, ended up well below the local pricing on EEX. Mm. Um, so that's, I think, interesting. It was under 2,500 US, um, and that's that's something worth I mean, New Zealand prices, you know, came off about $40. You can see that in the C2 uh, over in the chart, in the bar chart. But um, when we then line them up, uh, you know, New Zealand product has come right back and that's got a balance the new zealand line number there that gdt line has got an influence of the european mm. value in it <clears throat> but uh, still new zealand futures are um, no doubt going to correct today because they're well above yes um in terms of the butter market um yeah, gdt is still well down you'd expect that the european uh values have been reasonably resilient so cream seems to be tightening a little bit in europe but um uh, the butter market's still trying to find its feet and still trying to find some sort of balance, uh, hoping retail demand will pick up a bit. Mm -hmm. And Cheddar's really converged. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly has. Um, so watch that space, and that's about the export pressure mm. that we talked about in the earlier chart. So, yes, the GD, the whole powder, and um, that's really a roller coaster that's built up some speed going down there on the left hand side it certainly has we thought you know a few events back we might be stabilizing but uh yeah we're back on the we're back on the fairground ride aren't we there's just no evidence that things are tightening in china no and the, the need to come back to gdt and and cover short it's just not there yet mm. um there's certainly not a supply issue for homework powder though is it i mean we're in the seasonal low part of the new zealand mm. system there's not a lot of product around so it's got to be that yeah plenty of of inventories in China. The sad thing here is I actually had to change the index on the left-hand side to see the bars on the whole powder chart there in the futures comparison. Uh, but uh, hopefully we don't need to take that down further. Mm. So demand was um, was poor. I mean, the, the interesting result here is you know, demand being so weak on skim milk powder in the earlier rounds, but the result held up. And when we look at some of the comparisons of how these recent events have gone, um, this is just the powders where I pulled this out. And mm. it's just, you know, you can see why these this whole milk powder result was weak. It just fell flat straight away. Absolutely. Um, and stayed weaker. Whereas um skim is a bit more interesting, a bit mixed, you know, it it held up a bit. Um and that little difference in the rally in the mid-range there after the starting point just got a little better result than the previous one. Mm. It's an interesting science, this GDT thing, isn't it? It is. Just how that works. Yeah. Moving on, um, the buying mix. Um, so, you know, China bought more whole milk powder at this event and it's still up over the last few events of, you know, this seven events of 23 and it even looks better if you just take the period after New Year. Sure. Um, but um, that's on a pretty low base and, you know, naturally when you look at the total trade that we've had going previously, we are well down in terms of total demand. Skim with powder buying has also been higher. Um, there's just not much other heavy lifting's being done. 
No. And when you look at Southeast Asia in both quarters, they've bought it, already bought a lot of homo powder earlier uh, in general trade, mm -hmm. um, but we're still waiting for them to come back on skin. And that, you know, it's just a case of when that gets triggered and it probably gets triggered by some sort of slowing on the supply side, mm -hmm. you know, to show we're at the bottom. Yes, and there's strong evidence. Mm. Um, I thought I'd throw in a couple of other interesting ones, how the Middle East buying, as that difference, as the whole Pata, uh value stayed, um, if you like, cheaper than the combined, you know, skim and AMF values, that buying's been much stronger. Yeah. It's starting to slow now. Mm. But um, I'm not seeing so much of a value. No, I thought that was interesting. Mm. And this is also in this event the the fact that there was has been a bit more stronger buying from Europe uh, for other product through the GDT mechanism, which probably gives you a cheaper result if yeah. no one else turns up. Yes, interesting idea. What's Clever. Mm. Mm. Okay, a couple of other comparatives. Yeah, uh, we love these. Wow, that's, that's synthetic. synthetic. It's just jammed yeah. together. Yeah, and with a bit of fat around in New Zealand, uh, AMF is is tanky. So massive discount there. Well, it's not as as bad as it's been. It's so, getting there, but it's on the way. Quickly getting there. Mm. It seems to go down sharply, doesn't it? It does. It doesn't yeah. ever do things in gradual. No, it just either plunges or soars. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe, chart of the week. Well, this week, um, I thought we just put up the latest um, data from. Australia, and it will probably be no surprise that milk production is down. We've only got one positive region in Australia, which is a little island to the south of us here. Mm. Um, but it's it's interesting in the context of some news we've had in, in the Australian industry that uh, Saputo is selling two major milk processing plants to one of our two major retailers in Coles mm. supermarkets. Um, interesting development. Um Coles has, in recent years, um, secured its own farm supply, so direct supply with farmers, which our UK viewers would be very familiar it's with. It's a fairly substantial. I mean, it's five hundred. You know, getting up towards five hundred million. It's a lot of milk because they've they started with their own people uh, milk, as you know, Steve, and now they've expanded that into private label cheese, which was a very important um, move, probably for the wider industry. And now, getting to the end of a ten-year contract that was started with the Murray Goulburn. Mm. Um, administration um, that Saputo inherited, that contract coming to an end, Saputo, never, you know, not never keen on the, no, on the um, never loved it. the economics of this this contract, uh, and Coles have stepped in to buy these these plants from Saputo. So you're saying uh, this chart's got a bit to do with that? I think this chart has got a bit to because in in Australia at the moment, um, you know, and people around the world might see that our farm gate prices, if they look at our farm gate prices, are holding up. It's all about milk security mm. in Australia at the moment, isn't it, Steve? Because mm. we keep got very good prices, but we keep losing milk production. So and El Nino's coming down the road. That's right. Drier conditions ahead. So mm. yeah, interesting times. Yeah, very. Yeah. Mm. So there's been a lot of speculation. What does this mean next? You know, yes. with um, put as a you know a, a good medium sized global player. Uh, it's still got some prized assets in this industry, and so it's now this has sparked a lot of discussion about you know what comes after this. That's right. I mean, they they, they flagged that they would be streamlining. Mm. They've closed other plants, other small plants. They've invested in that island to the south of us where there is some growth. Okay. Well, um, look, thanks. For watching um you've been a great audience once again and we'll uh, we'll be back soon <music>